I'm Pastor Goodman, uh, Mount Calvary Lutheran Church in San Antonio, Texas. This is Ashley Sheldon uh, out in Colorado. Uh, she's a mental health professional. This is Under the Cross, and today we are going to tackle uh, one of my most hated and favorite things to talk about, self-esteem. Um, this, is, this is one of those things that uh, everywhere we go, we're told that we ought to have good self-esteem, and everywhere we go, we interact with things that would destroy our self-esteem all at the same time, which kind of leaves us in a bit of a pickle. Um, and in a lot of it, I think we're sort of setting ourselves up to fail. And so we're going to spend our time today uh, picking apart not only sort of what self-esteem is and, and where it comes from, but how to address it, uh, how to address not having enough of it, how to address having way too much of it, and, and where we maybe ought to look for our, our worth and our value so that uh, as we, we interact in our lives and don't just run from them, uh, we can interact as if we are somebody that our Lord loves. Absolutely. And when it comes to the topic of self-esteem, um, it's it's important to kind of just like define what it is, right? It literally just means to esteem oneself, right? To value oneself, um, to have self-worth, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I think that a lot of um, kind of common issues, mental, not necessarily like diagnoses, but a lot of issues or concerns um, definitely come up. Um, due to lack of esteem, right, self-esteem. Um, when we talk about maybe body image issues, um, peer issues, um, even just like social anxiety and social, you know, interactions, um, a lot of people will end up, you know, using certain things or doing things differently uh, in order to help their self-esteem, right? Um, and again, not to go back to childhood, but that's where a lot of, you know, a lot of the times that, is built like that foundation right so if you have other people essentially validating that you have you know that you should have self-esteem right you should have high self-esteem value yourself and your worth um then that's what you're gonna think that's what you're gonna think about yourself um and if you have people caregivers whoever telling you um you're not worth x y and z right like you're not worthy you're not good enough um that is a, is a running track in your head um, that's really hard uh, to, to kind of get rid of and change without uh, some really intentional change and support. Right, and, and that gets magnified, especially inside of Christian homes, families, schools, and, and worldviews, uh, because as, as Christians, we hang on a whole lot tighter to, to the law than the world would, which sees part of it, uh, even in natural law, to be completely an atheist, to be completely uh, pagan or, or Buddhist or any kind of worldview, there's there's still sort of general rights and wrongs. Like it, it, it's generally considered wrong to steal, to, to uh, shoot people in the, the face, uh, the, these kinds of major tragedies. But the law is magnified inside of the Christian worldview because we hold God's word before our eyes, and this is not great when we want to talk about self-value. Uh, see, the, the problem with self-esteem is that it's wholly and completely of God's law. This is, this is a, a law word, whereas we uh, approach the scriptures in terms of law and gospel. To find value in yourself is to find value in what you're doing, what you are. Uh, and the problem is, well, the law shows you that you're a sinner. If you're looking at the law and then you're looking at yourself and you don't feel like a sinner you're either not really looking at the law or you're not really looking at ourself and so especially inside of christian families we, we struggle then with with um ideals of, of purity uh, for teenagers I, I, ideals of of uh, masculinity or femininity we struggle with, with fitting in we, we struggle with all of these things that over and over again when we take to god's word and we want to try and find value in who we are we just find out that we're not enough and so if all you sort of have then is the law before you to try and define your worth, you've either got to lower the bar and feel better about yourself, uh, find somebody who's going to tell you, regardless of what God says, you are great, you are wonderful, or hear nothing but what the law actually says and then look at myself and realize I am anything but. Uh, this, this, this is the, the sort of awkward duality of pride and despair that we have when we have only law and no gospel to define who we are. 
And since self-esteem is such a core part of self-identity, if all you want to do as a Christian is look at God's law to try and figure out who you are, or even just to sort of flip it around and say, if all I want to do is look at myself and what I'm accomplishing to figure out who I am, well, if I'm going to be honest, it's not enough. Um, if, if we want to, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, you know, it, it, if you look at it from that perspective, you know, kind of like we talked about before, like God made all of these other parts of you, right? Things that you enjoy, your hobbies, your profession, your friends, your groups, your whatever. Um, and that's, that's all part of that, right? And so just like with any, anybody's religion or spirituality or beliefs or whatever, um, that, that's a piece of them. Um, that's not like our identities are made up of so many different things. Right. But they're knit together. They're not just individual little blocks. And so it's not like, you know, a, a third of you is a Christian and a third of you is a student and a third of you is a kid. It, it, it's that you are a Christian baptized student and you are a Christian baptized child. And these things knit together so that uh, who you are in Christ should actually give color and shape to how you can see yourself, even in light of your sins because you know you're something more. This is why self-esteem is, is honestly, spiritually, it's just a really evil concept because it teaches you to look to yourself for value. And nothing is actually worth what it can do in the world. Like that's, that's everywhere. Why is a diamond worth so much money? It, it, it's not because it can do anything. It's just because people are willing to, to pay for it. If you want to define yourself simply in terms of what you can accomplish, well, that's not how the world works. You are, you are not valuable to God because of what you can do. You were bought with a price. You are worth more than gold or silver. You are worth what somebody was willing to pay for you. And that's that's exactly one death of God. So if we were going to carry who we are based on our worth, and we only want to do it based on our ability to do certain things, well, and I can say as, as a as a student, I should have great self-esteem. And as an athlete, clearly I should not. As a Christian, I, I'm really struggling. Um, when we sort of have these little pigeonholes where we finally feel comfortable, it makes us run from a lot of the places where God has actually put us to live. Because like, like you said, we, we should be all of these things. God has given us these vocations and, and more. He gives us an identity that should not be wholly uh, composed of the law, lest we end up as failures in all of the places that we should be and really only end up running and hiding from all of the best places, we, we should find comfort, we should find love and, and be able to, to share it too. Uh, we, we have to be able to look to more for, for our, our worth than simply the self. And you make a great point about uh, kind of your, your little spiel about diamonds, right? Is that it's, it's, it's almost perceived value, right? If somebody tells you this handbag is worth $10,000, you're like, well, this must be great, right? Like this must be a real... Uh, a real good piece of a uh, piece of equipment um, and somebody else could look at it and be like that looks like it's worth twenty dollars like I don't see any value in that right I don't really but but because you're told hey this is valuable this is the perceived value this is what this is supposed to be um, you kind of don't really think for yourself right and you just kind of it, it can be like a cultural phenomenon right that like this is valued right like this and, and this is getting into more, but uh, like whatever society or culture deems like this person is on a higher pedestal, right? Um, like royalty or celebrities or like certain people in, in society, right, are esteemed um, as more than other people. And that's where it can get tricky and where, you know, society's telling me I'm not as worth, worth, uh, worth as much as this person next to me. So what does that say about me? And that, and that gets really internalized. Absolutely. And it's especially dangerous uh, inside of the church because if you want to go by those standards, you're going to miss the greatest value of all. So the, the one that we, we kind of keep going back to for this, uh, at least for me, it's, it's the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. Uh, you know this from Luke chapter 18. Uh, he told a parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous, that they were worthwhile, uh, that they had values. And so they treated others with contempt. Jesus said, two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee standing by himself prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector standing far off would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to a sinner, me. I tell you this, 
This man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. So you have, by all the standards, the guy who should have more value, the Pharisee. Who, like we, we know that this is a bad name, Pharisee, and so we always imagine them as like super villains, like twisted mustaches and stuff. But in reality, like these are the people who do all the right things publicly. These are the people who have uh, upstanding families. These are the people who, who are looked at, um, maybe not with like celebrity status of today, but as the people you actually want to have around because they're, they're good neighbors, they're good friends. Uh, and if you look at the tax collector, it's his job to take money from you. And that's how he feeds his family, by trying to steal from you. Um, and if you listen to the Pharisee, he cheated on his wife too, which I'm, I'm probably willing to believe. Um, this guy should have awful self-esteem. And he does. He beats his breast saying, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. He can't even look at God. But the miracle of the gospel is that we're not judged by our worth in ourselves. You are not worth what you can accomplish. You are worth what was paid for you. The Pharisee tries to find his worth only in what he can do, and he goes home to his house not worth enough. But the the, the tax collector who by his own works are, is worthless, uh, worse than worthless. He, he's, he's a burden on everyone around him. He goes home justified. And it's, it's, it's not just that uh, God loves you just as you are. It, it's not just that, you know, you should be great with your, your flaws. It's that God has mercy. It's that God sees in you something so precious that he would give his value to you. Uh, we, we go um, humbled and, and we sort of get hokey about this. Like, well, I just shouldn't brag about myself too much because then I'll look like a jerk. But in, in reality, um, it, it's, it's go humiliated. Go, go with all the world saying you have no value. And here, God adds his value to you. The problem with sort of looking to the places the world would add value to is that you're going to miss the one value that actually endures, that, that you have value in, in Christ who gave his life for you. He, you, have, you have an identity apart from your works. You, you have a, an esteem apart from the self. It, it's holy in Christ. This is how we have to start to see ourselves. Otherwise, it's always going to be hiding from the law to feel pride or looking at it to feel despair. I think you make a great point too about, you know, our, our value and our self-esteem is not what we can offer, isn't always like what we can accomplish, you know, how high ranking are we, the job you have, what, what these perceived status symbols are, right? Um, because that can get dangerous as well. Um, and I can tell you that probably most of the people um, that ha look like they have their stuff together and look like um, they have this high self-esteem are the ones with the problems, right? But they know how to, they know how to fake it. They know how to come across. Um, uh, yeah. Um, and, and they, they just, they have it down. Um, and I think when it comes to, you know, it, kids and families and teens and stuff, I think that's where the accomplishment part, especially I would say like high school to college, um, gets really kind of murky. Um, because, you know, you have to get into this school, you have to get into this program, you have to have straight A's, you have to have a five point GPA. I don't know if that like exists still. Um, but like you have, it's not even, you can't even have perfect. You have to have beyond perfect GPA. Um, and so all of these things, right. That can get caught up in, I'm not even doing things that I enjoy. I'm not even doing things that I find value in, but I'm being told I need to do these in order to be, be perceived as X, Y, and Z. Right. And, and so especially then when we grab hold of Christianity, because we know so how, how desperate we are to, to look like enough, to, to get into the right school, to, to have the right group of friends, to have friends, um, that, that sometimes Christianity almost becomes sort of a means to the end that we actually want, sort of like a step stool that, that might, if we pray hard enough, uh, get us into the right place. Um, but our religion has to be sort of more than rub some Jesus on it and things will get better. Uh, if, if that's really all it is, what do you do then when you pray so desperately and still suck at basketball? Hi. Uh, what do you do when, when the serious ones, you, you, you pray desperately for, for people to just not look at you with contempt. Christianity has to be more than a, a means to the end. It, it actually is the identity itself that gives you value as you go out into all of these things. To, to look at yourself, uh, instead of saying, first, who is an athlete in Christianity might make me a better one, or first, who is a student in Christianity might make, make me a better one. Rather, I'm a Christian, that everywhere I go, I go holy, I go baptized, I go worthy of love because love was paid for me. And so there are going to be places where I am a sinner and sin is ugly stuff. And sometimes when the world finally does see it, 
they esteem us a whole lot less, but our Lord still looks at us in mercy. Our Lord still looks at us in love that actually lets us look at ourselves in the mirror. Uh, if we actually want to start to, to address issues with self-esteem, we can't simply say rub more law on it, try harder, or rub some Jesus on it and you will stop measuring Jesus, but still go back to the law to, to measure your esteem. Rather, we have to almost start over. Um, this, is, this is not so much uh, about... Um, focusing on the self and then looking to Jesus and then fo focusing on the self again. This is actually looking away from the self and to Jesus so that everywhere I go, I go as somebody that our Lord cares for, our Lord wants to continue to work through. And even in, I can't for the life of me see it because when I look at myself, I see a failure at everything I do. I have the promise that he has not abandoned me. And so he'll get done what he needs to do. And I can live my days in light of the promise that he who not only gave me my value, worth more than anything the world could give, actually loves me so much that he would accomplish good things through me so that even though I look through my day and I find only sin and only failure and only shame, which is another thing we're going to need to talk about here, I, I can also find worth because it's my God who's accomplishing these good things. It's, it's your God too.